Oh, also, hi, up. by the way. Hello, hello. <laughs> the only thing, I immediately thought, oh, I prefer to face a druid, but then I remembered that I would have to hurt Fluffy's, so, so it would break cleric. This is where I stand, because, like, <laughs> cleric, depending on level, could be like, ah, oh, great, now I've got to fight a healer and an angel. One of those <laughs> is you're going to die before I do. Or on the druid side of things, it's like, wait, it's a druid, yes, but then it does summon animals. Oh, if it's the right kind of druid, it's a lot of animals. Mm. Mm. That's very fun. Yeah. I have I been in a party when that happened. Um, I know Z did one for his animated spell book, where it's like, yeah, you can ruin a combat encounter by being a druid and just having a crap ton of raptors. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I... Pack tactics. Yeah. But no, it's, it's also I was so... sub-druid, because if, when you do the yeah. summon thing, yeah. They get magical yeah. weapons. Oh god. Yeah, so it's like, oh no, you're immune to you're immune to non magical hits. Doesn't matter. All these raptors have got magical claws and teeth. Oh, and Friday <laughs> Flare. Wild shape. I'm now a raptor. Ha Yeah. So... And it doesn't break concentration. So yeah, I was uh kinda thinking that uh I've been reading a lot of lore of, like, uh, different black dogs lately. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I okay. was uh, thinking, like, uh, if there would be any kind of class or race class combo, which could uh, basically transform into a shadow form of a dog... I think there's a monk subclass that can turn into a shadow. Yeah, yeah the way of the shadow monk. The way of the shadows. Um, In which case, you just need to play a dog skinned. Probably a dog skinned tabaxi, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, could go shifter. Yeah, shifter. And then you have canine features, so you're not quite werewolf, but you're close enough to have those features. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, because I heard this. Um, um would you would i say that there is this uh well um well you guys as british know a lot of uh, there are a lot of like uh british uh, law like uh urban legends about dogs yeah. like black dogs uh, some of them being benevolent, some being male uh, malevolent. Um, but uh, yeah, like uh, there is this uh, story in uh, long hauling uh, truckers in uh, like uh, in USA that uh, if you have a black dog, like a shadow of a dog running next to your truck in the same direction. You are basically it's a guardian, but if you see it jump in front of your car, then hit the brakes because you are actually gonna freaking hit something like a pole or something. Or a black dog. Yeah, but the, like the shadowy. Uh, if you hit the dog, if you hit the shadowy black dog, uh, it actually means that uh, you're basically you're hallucinating it, and uh, it actually is like a, a traffic sign or something where you are gonna crash anyway. Speaking of black dogs, um, where I used to uh, come from in the most e uh, easterly part of the UK. Um, there is a uh, legend of a black dog known as Black Shuck. And oh yeah, Black Shuck, yeah. Yeah, and uh, essentially there's this church. Um, I want to say it's... Uh, I think it's in Attlesborough, Attlesborough or something like that. But essentially, um, uh, legend has it that uh, Black Sh like There's these like claw marks on the church doors. And... No one could explain what those claw marks are because it's way too big to be 
uh, size of even the biggest dog um, known, like, known to man sort of thing. And uh, the claw marks looked burnt onto the wood as opposed to just yeah. being genu genuinely scratched. So, um, as far as people can say, it could yeah, and like, uh, Black Shock is actually one, uh, uh, one of the legends, uh, I would want to believe that it's true. <laughs> yeah, also, the band, uh, The Darkness, who hailed from my old stomping ground, um, actually wrote a song about Black Shock, if I recall correctly. Yes. Darkness, yeah, they yeah, have a song. Darkness uh, has a song called Black Shock. Yeah. In Norfolk, Suffolk, Lincolnshire, and uh, northern parts of Essex. Uh, yeah, something along, yeah, more or less around that sort of area. Nearby village of Bluthburg. Yeah. And there we go. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I found the thing, by the way. The yeah. Against the one we want is the circle of the shepherd. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Starting at sixth level, beasts of fate you conjure evolves in the normal. Any beast of fate summoned by this creature gains the following benefits. Get two extra hit points per hit die, and uh, damage from its natural weapons are considered magical. <laughs> and it just gets worse from there. <laughs> the fantastic um, series of Dimension 20 called The Seven. Hmm. Where uh, uh, Ricky Ishii, they play, um, they play sort of a mushroom and rot themed circle of the Shepherd Druid, and they're terrifying. They took out one of the bosses with a flock of super powered geese. Yep. Just because yeah. they managed to get summon so many things that were just boosted just that little bit to be a pain in the ass. Again, as Z pointed out. Raptors and Circular Shepherd Druid gets fun. Because mm. Pack Tactics is incredibly broken. That has now magical damage. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just keep on summoning. Anyway, <laughs> on the subject of summoning things, last time on D&D... &D, mm -hmm. it, it, it feels more appropriate for me to go last time on D&D. &D, a wonderful band of adventurers have been traversing the plane of Earth. You have... Uh, been subcontracted to deliver a phoenix egg currently being held by Dal uh, Earth Genie to the a location known as the Pillar of Creation over the course of uh, sailing I suppose across the Dune Sea you came across a purple worm which you managed to defeat and then start harvesting its innards and bits for for food until you finally did arrive at the Pillar where a group of cultists, fanatics, maniacs, whatever you want to put them, category you want to put them in at, were barring your entry into the overall temple itself. <coughs> Upon defeating said fanatics, that they give the inverted <coughs> air quotes there, Dash. It is appreciated, VMO. You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> Rex being a bit uh, a lovely on their behalf. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, we, and I have a child. We keep adding uh, like more words to the Dwarven Violator now. I think it's the Dwarven Azer uh, Earth Cultist Violator? I think something like that, yeah. It's, it's going to be think a really long name by the time it says It's only when it's critic natural 20s though. Yes. Things it quits and kills. <laughs> But anyway, you guys then proceeded to enter into the temple. You managed to overcome one series of traps. And I believe when we last left off, Captain Das, at the head of the queue. Oh, yes. Being the you come round the corner. Yes. And see within a room five more cultists arranged in a defensive formation around the doorway. Behind them in this room is a colossal earth statue. What do you want to do? Now, do I do the smart thing 
and let everyone else know that you know yeah these guys are really expecting us we should probably I was gonna say, didn't you get shot at uh i don't think i did yet uh yes you did i think they missed yes or yes, they, they missed, me? but uh... no, no, I, no. Well, the last, the last thing I see is a sixteen, which technically hit me, so I already took the damage. Like that. So, oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, do I do the smart thing and alert everyone else that you know there's five guys um, uh, who smell strangely of peanut fries, um, <laughs> or? Do... <laughs> Oh. Sorry, I love that addition. <laughs> it, it's good. Um, or do I do the das thing and just goes, Hello, fellas. Uh, no, why, hello there, fellas. You may be wondering what what you are. I mean, I mean, I don't know. Uh, do I do the das thing or do I do the smart thing? Do the das thing. Your das. All right, then. In that case, then. Das. Das kind of does an interpretive light or sign language that there are like five guys in the room and that uh, um, he has a plan in, in quotation marks kind of thing um, and uh, like whether anyone understands the sign language or not we'll never know the dust is gonna go. Oh, why, hello there, fellas. Uh, nice to see you are keeping this place uh, well kept, sort of thing. I am Captain Das Big Claw, Captain of the Temple Inspection. Yes, Captain of the Temple Inspection Unit, and I've got to say so far, I have seen some, some good things, some which are absolutely abysmal, and I was wondering whether I could uh, ask you a few questions about uh, uh, the this very establishment of which you are ke keeping um, in good condition, really. Firstly, Das, go ahead and make a deception check for me. Which will probably go bad, but you know what? It's worth it! As, as you make that statement, they look over to you. It starts off in tone, and they realise that you are a material, so they speak in common. Um, yeah, great start, guys! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, wow! <laughs> if you are... <laughs> Of the temple inspection. Where is your high visibility jacket, hard hat, and clipboard? That is an excellent question. In fact, I'm oh. going to grab my hardboard right now. Bring out my crossbow. The the bring out. No, actually, it's the short bow. Yes, it's your short bow. You don't it's have a crossbow anymore. But in yet. any case, a uh, short bow. And I'm going to try and take a pot shot at one, uh, the one who just spoke. <laughs> Make your attack roll, and they will also take uh, shots at you with crossbows, and at that point we'll start initiative. <laughs> uh, oh no, I can't give you two strike, damn. So, initiatives needed? Uh, uh, yes, in just a moment. That, that'll be a 28 okay. to hit. That'll hit. <laughs> Wow, these guys are not hitting gas today. Yeah, that... Oh, there's one. Okay, <laughs> let, let me... Let, let me bloody do some damage. Or at least threaten them with a good time. Well, there you go. I've hit you once for five. Go ahead and roll your damage, please, Captain Das. And that comes with a bit of... Uh, will that... Will sneak attack be included? Yes, because you're raking your dash In feet. that case, then, that's will be a 31 points of damage. Whoa! <laughs> straight away now as I was saying <laughs> <laughs> so you two essentially trade weapon blows yours is just a money of convenience his head has now got an arrow in it yeah okay I'm gonna roll initiative yeah so which point I like everyone else to roll initiative I'll be a good I'll be a good girl 
a roll initiative. Uh, that's only a 30. I need to log in, so I will... That's an 18. Okay, <laughs> so... 14. So I need to take five points of damage, did you say? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to uncanny... Uh, if I use uncanny dodge now, will I be able to use uncanny dodge when it comes to my turn? Is uncanny dodge specifically worded as a reaction? I think it is. Uh, that is a very good question. I want to say it is. Give me a minute. Um... Uh, when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction. Yeah, it's a reaction. Yeah, so in that case, then you won't have oh, that wow. again until the start of your next, until the start of your turn in the combat order. Eh, it's five points right of there, damage. Right I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, I'll survive. I'll survive. Also, Aileen just got a natural twenty. The one time Marie's not here. Oh, bloody natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> what? Just to quicken things up, what can I roll for initiative on roll twenty? Because uh, a D twenty. The beyond's being ages. No, just a twenty. Yeah, it's just flat D twenty for me. Four. What's your dex? I have no idea. But I'm saying because D and D and Beyond is going to be ages. Just roll flat. Okay, it is. Just a flat one then, so that goes. Nah, Elena is a three. For some reason, it has not done that properly. That is really dumb. There we go. Everyone's in order. Hooray! Oh, right here. I should also switch over to the appropriate music. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba, Cause I want some battle music. Appropriate. Oh wait, you didn't want an acapella. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the best I can do is that, which is showing my the VLC player that I have on right now. Oh, that's hilarious. If I minimise it, it actually turns it off. Anyways, alright, so we need to go first. Seven options, very neat. What will she do? I was gonna say, what do you mean I don't have the crossbow anymore? I thought I had the crossbow on me. Like, I don't know, the, I don't the in my head, I think crossbow. you. No, you, you lost you, it. You, I was gonna say, you, I, I think you, I still do. I say, you should have my crossbow on you. Yeah, that, that's the thing, because I remember you asking me which spell do I want to attach, and I said uh, reduce and large. Oh, and yes. Large reduce. Uh, I pulled out the short bow, though, so that's fine. That one. I'm saving that for something special. Hmm. You know when you have access to pretty high powers characters and you want to do something but you don't want to waste something that wants to Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that feeling. But then Alien's a druid, so she can have shapeshift if she wants. Yeah, I know. You can shape shift if you wanna. You can leave your <laughs> friends behind. Uh, uh she's gonna go and go the water back. What did you get me at 26? Yeah, that's gonna hit. She's gonna take eight points of damage. It's how big are you? Yes, but Watch me off. I went BAM! Oh okay. I, I thought you were talking to me. So what? What have I done? No, 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 fine. Carry on. All right, then. But that's going to be her turn for the time being. That brings us now to Rex. Yes. Let's see what happens. Uh... Violence. <laughs> the Walden Violator Violence. <laughs> yeah, I actually renamed it. You'll see, see it soon <laughs> enough. Oh no! <laughs> I really hope it's a really 
It's not actually a really long name, but uh, I need to get the name of every character, every like uh, creature type I have killed at some point. But let's see what happens. 24! A 24 will hit. Do a will violate his start and finish the work. 14! Uh, this one. Right. And my second attack is gonna be against this one. Okay. Let's see. That's a nut 20! <laughs> That's a critical hit. Go ahead and roll your critical damage. Also, that's like now called an omnifier. Yes. Well, yes. Fun. I find it hilarious that it's less damage than. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, these are Earth Elementals, they have very thick skulls. Yeah, and also... That is gonna be... I... Wait, wait a minute. I actually do have five more movement. Which is <laughs> gonna be good. Because I am going to move here. A move, you said? Yes. I was gonna say... Why do you want that? Well, well true, actually. No, <laughs> let's not do that then. Oh. I need to click them all twice and just let them wail on you. <laughs> okay, I need to add to the notes list that it has Earth Elementals now. <laughs> the Earthen Omni Violet. Alright. And next up is the great and powerful Epper. Alright, so as I am riding Chip, um, if I can, I'm going to ride with uh, ride atop Chip, so uh, we'll just go with my token as the location, so 5, 10, 15, 20. So we're, we're both here. Mm-hmm. Um, Pepper, of course, is going to do something sensible before um, before dying. Can't do concentration because otherwise Chip disappears. Well, Chip's a uh, good time. Well, Chip was born outside this building. I don't know where home is for Chip. Outside this building. On a block. I mean, I suppose that makes sense. Um, <laughs> um, Terrible joke, <laughs> In which case... God, I wish I'd thought about this before I'd done anything. Um, Appa is going to... Um, shoot this guy with a gun. Fire away. Uh, so. 22. Yeah, that's it. And that's going to be 6 piercing damage, and then. Uh, I think that's why I looked away for the second. I'm guessing this one at the back of the room. Yes. Excellent. And that much fire damage. 6, 7 fire damage. The and the. Digs in and blows a chunk out of the shoulder. And then I'm going to cast Toll the Bell. Toll the Dead on the same guy. So they need to make a DC 17 wisdom saving throw. Funny thing is, they don't have a wisdom save. And that is a fail. Fantastic. They're going to take 2d12 necrotic damage. For a total of 6. I <laughs> <laughs> was a pathetic roll. Um, it was, but I have some great news for you. It's a dead one. At which point Chip's now going to have some fun. Because um, <coughs> we, we, we love a bit of Chip. Chip's great. 
with gray, well, with cheese, preferably. I don't know, to be honest, you can't beat just salt and pepper. Bit of vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so first, we so we're going to go after this one first. Um, does a natural 20 hit? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know you couldn't hit for squat yesterday in the final boss fight game. This is making up for it now. <laughs> True that. All right, so that's going to be that would be double dice, but not double modifiers. Mm -hmm. That's two D ten plus eight. Also, it's the only one that's been undamaged this entire fight. So this could be um, the end of him. That's 17. He's not dead. Yes. But he's in a world of pain. Stop sm smash. <laughs> and he's going to roll to hit again. Yeah, you um, know when someone... but You know like that feeling when you get smacked in the face by a football? Yeah. And it just stings. Yeah. Oh, what it yeah. feels like for him right now. That was so close to another nat 20. <laughs> it was. But that would also hit. Um, for... Nine budgeting that damage. I have some great news for Chip. He has earned his first kill. I think he killed a lot of people outside. <laughs> but in my head, he's just sort of just grabbed this guy, just crushed him twice into the wall. Like, first one is where you get sort of the cartoonish silhouette. The second one is where he's just like smashed him in the in the stomach just to make sure. And Chip has smashed this cultist square in the face. Oh, good boy, good boy. All right, and that brings us to I want to say a cat and das. All right, das, that cat and das is going to go right. So as I was saying. I was going to say some really complimentary things about this establishment, but your hospitality has been absolutely atrocious. And for that, that deserves a bit of punishment. And actually, if I, if I rewind that movement, uh, <laughs> if I rewind that movement, uh, I am going, you know what? That's secretly the Prince of Persia. Three, I mean, why not? Two, <laughs> he is part of the Assassin Brotherhood. He is technically a descendant Five. of a Prince of Persia. Uh, Game think, mechanically speaking. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm flanking with Rex on this one. So yes, you get the advantage. I will gain advantage, and you know what? I'm going to draw the rapier, and I'm going to uh, essentially try and end this guy. That'll be a 24 to hit. That'll be a hit. Oh boy. Um, go off, and of course, it will have a sneak attack because I did not. And that's going to be a total of 24 points of damage. You know, he had hit points, right? <laughs> yeah, he had hit points. <laughs> you didn't. Double his remaining hit points and damage. Yeah, good times. And uh, <laughs> so I moved one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Four, five, yeah, so you can get out of there for six. I mean, I could. And you know what? I will. I'm gonna be like, yeah, that's what happens when you don't give good hospitality to your guests. You have a tail, don't forget. Uh, as he saw doing this, like, you, you know, with the whole hand thing, right? It I goes, feel like I'm backseat playing it, but it's like, you're about something that's like, you forget you've got a tail attack. Yeah, that is very true. Um, so, I'll, as a bonus action, I'm going to do the whole two weapon fighting, like, shenanigans sort of things. And I'm going to attempt to, like, well, like, you know how, you know how, like, um, like when people are expressive with the hand sort of thing as well and talking sort of thing he's yeah. kind of doing that but with his tail and <laughs> this will not have advantage because uh no, there'd be no flanking. flanking 
So I'm like, so, yeah, so he's like, um, yeah, so he's like, oh god, my poor brain's all over the place right now. Um, that's okay. Yeah, it's. But then it's a hit, by the way. Yeah, I know, I'm just gonna roll the thing. Gonna roll. Yeah, the the, the sneak attack won't apply because, no. um, you know, I already have one sneak attack something, and I'll be a four! Lovely. Yeah. No, I just realised it took a little off this, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, so, uh. It's like, yeah, this is what happens when you don't pr- give good hospitality to your guests. And he's just sort of like poking this guy, like, sort of with the tail. Um, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> as he's doing it. Like, that hurts. Yeah, I know. It hurts when you give poor hospitality to your guests. It, you should feel bad. <laughs> uh, that'll be that's as good. Okie dokie. Well, that now takes us to um, it's go, the only one remaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, if only he had ways of getting out of this. Shocker, he doesn't. He really doesn't. <laughs> Oh well, do you know what? He's gonna he's gonna try and go out the way he lives. He's gonna swing his maul at Rex because well, Rex is the one that critted him in the face. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a nine. Yeah, that's a miss. Don't you mean a nine? Like a nine? A no. <laughs> nine. <laughs> There are so many things I would throw into me a more for that one. Terrible. <laughs> Puns we'll have to do later. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, that brings us now to Tink's go. Mm-hmm. Right, let's see what we can do. Mm-hmm. Come round the corner. So is it these two red guys? Uh, yeah. uh, that, the one remaining. That one's dead. Well, the one remaining. Yeah, yeah, the one remaining here next to Rex. But you can't really see from there. If you go one up, you'll have a better line of sight on him. There we go. I will use my retractable trident. Rolls. Hits. <laughs> uh, yeah, 21 hits. <laughs> He's still not dead. What? How is he not dead? I'm pure luck. So you poke your trident around the corner and take out another chunk of this poor stony bugger. Still wants to be sort of like a gravel all over the place, and he's. You'll never defile this temple! Take your filth and get out! Well, oh god. No, it's not my turn yet. <laughs> At which point it is Aliens go? And, uh, I don't know what else to do. I should be generous. Uh, annoyingly though, oh yeah, actually I can't even get the next to Rex, it's just paint there. Correct. Ah! Chip is one with the wall. Yes. <laughs> like all other film Oh, that's And Rex, be healed. For ten. Nice. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That helps. Uh, it makes me feel a little better. Oh, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, but hurt so much. Oh no, I cast in oh. inflict wounds instead. Oh, no. no, that was that was the wrong one. Oh dear. Never mind. <laughs> and 
nothing else that can really be done. So that takes us to Rex is going. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. And Rex is gonna well, of course, uh, hit this guy. Okay. Let's see. Take Let's see what happens. Twenty-six. Ooh, that's a hit. Eleven. But doesn't it come with advantage being? Oh, right. No, I'm not flanking. flanking with anyone. But I have some news for you, and that is, he's dead. Sweet. He crumbles into a pile of gravel before you. Nice. Well, with that, I Switch it over to more appropriate music. I think that I think they failed your inspection, Das. Das is currently not here right now. I should go answer the door. Can you can you let oh, Chip well, out? Is Chip is stuck in the wall. Is messed up plans of uh, inspection shenanigans. Yes. They failed. <laughs> What? Wait, what? I failed. Well, technically speaking, we did manage to kill all those guys, so... I, no, I said they failed. Yeah, they failed on their bloody inspect on their bloody inspections. I will be writing this report up and sending it to the in inspection <laughs> the Temple Inspection Society. That's what? Right. what? What are they protecting in here? I mean... There's just a statue. So, as you guys get a chance to look around the room, in the bottom corner of the room you can see a pile of what looks like adventuring sacks all piled up in a neat-ish pile. Um, in the top part of the room stands a, like I said, a large stone statue. This one depicts a human or humanoid yeah, humanoid figure. Um, a spear in one hand, a shield with what looks like a Medusa head design okay. on it. Mm -hmm. And below in... Okay, yes, thank you for that. Um, and below that is a dais with an inscription of... Uh, a depiction of a human soldier in regal armour. Okay. Dow, is this your dad? <laughs> Adele glides around the corner and goes, "No, that's not dad. You see, dad, I mean. big guy, built like a mountain." I thought that, I thought your dad was like the human. That was very much the subtext. No, dad is very much the Atlas. Barry, is this ah, the one that's holding up the, the world? Yes. Or this yes. Is the, the sky of the earth plane. Yeah, the sky. I get what you mean, though. So is this your mum's axe, then? Uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a history check? And so let's I've go on. Death six. in the corner. Rummaging through their bags, you find... Um, an assortment of tools, pistons, rock hammers, rope, torches, standard adventuring McGoins. Hmm. Now, either a bunch of adventurers who traversed into this temple and had met an untimely death, or somebody else, or maybe these guys even, have brought those bits and pieces inside. And we're going to use them for some unscrupulous purpose. Yeah. Who knows? Anyways, a tinker nepper between the two of you. Uh, on Tink's side of things, like, yeah, it's not really enjoying a lot of things. Epper, you've read somewhere in your many studies of a hero, Pericles, Odysseus, all that kind of thing, who is famous for slaying a Medusa. <laughs> In a temple somewhere. Obviously, they've 
this might be the root of the original temple. A Medusa at all related to the Earth plane? Not as far as you're aware. They tend to be more people who have been cursed. Mm -hmm. Basically pissing off a god. <laughs> Gonna say. Okay. It was Hera, and Hera is, is obviously. The jealous type. Yes. Yeah. Man, it's very pretty. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly carved. Is it reflective? No, it is not reflective. Okay. Just made of a very smooth sandstone. Give me a perception check, Das. Okay. That's gonna be a fifteen. Oh yeah. On a fifteen, you see no discernible traps. Guys, there are no discernible traps in this room. <laughs> but the ceiling does look rather funky. Except the ceiling does look a bit funky. Like, does the ceiling have, like, spikes, or...? No, you notice that, that it has a patterned appearance to it. What? There are some lighter tiles and some darker tiles. Would I be able to work out, with my intelligence modifier of minus one, what on earth... Like, I'm, me as a player has a feeling they know what on earth it could be. Yes, a uh, death the... is just like, huh, the ceiling tiles don't match. Guys, the ceiling's a bit funky and the ceiling tiles don't match. Like, they've got the whole Captain Jack Sparrow expression where it's like, huh? Like, down, down me rod sits in the corner with the chrysalis and he's like, uh, probably an old trap or defense system. Um, not to. That feels a little pragmatic, but um, how are you going to get any deeper into the temple? You're a little big. You know when you like get a look, someone looks at you. It's like that stone cold silence. That's the kind of look Dow is giving you. She's like, it's um, fine, I'll squeeze. She, well, I mean, yeah. squeezing might not end well. I mean, like, you'll just sort of get ground up against the wall. And Epa just sort of, like, leans on the wall next to him. Just like, ugh. Grinding into it. I mean, it, surely that would hurt. And Dow just shows off, like, her hand just can effortlessly meld with the walls and then comes back out. Chip, can you do that? Chip just looks at you and gives like a confused head tilt. I'll just sort of clamber off. And I point at like the wall right next to me. Walk into that. And like become one with it and then come back. I need to remember now if your summoned creature has the ability to earth. Well, to. Or whatever it is. I can tell you this now. It does not. In that case, then, no. Chip just walks into the wall and then stops there and just awkwardly, like, there's a walking animation. <laughs> but yes, about this funky room with the funky roof decorations. What on earth does it possibly mean? Mm, um, maybe it's like a pattern? Maybe. Kind of thing? Maybe. Like a lock? You know, a combination? Could are be. The, are the tiles wrong in the room that we, we're, the rest of us are in? 
looking up at the ceiling, the tiles where you guys are perfectly fine. Nice. Apart from sort of like strips of what looks like quartz acting as like a natural light source, if you will. Um. But in the other room, there does indeed seem to be a pattern to it that Das has not seen. Well, his Das is seen, but he hasn't put together. Yeah. I'm not a very smart kobold. <clears throat> Am I a smart kobold? You are the smartest of kobolds. Oh, you are the smartest of kobolds. Like, you've got mm. brains. You're this goodest boy. <laughs> yeah. <You're a> dog. <laughs> yeah, white. White will do. I love how I that like I've, I've rolled a sixteen, and that's still less than my passive investigation. Oh, well, damn. My passive investigation is nineteen. Damn. <laughs> the universe just assembles its secrets before me. <laughs> Okay. What you notice after in the ceiling happen? are those four tiles have are like deliberately outlined with quartz crystal of different colours. That seems to almost bleed into the respective tiles. There is also what you notice a strip of black tiles. That sort of do that kind of a shape. And as you look up at those ones, you notice that they look like they could come loose. Could try prizing sure. one off and get... see. Uh, how tall is this chamber? Is it too tall for Chip to reach the ceiling? It is a bit too tall for you... Chip to reach, yes. The ceilings in this place are 20 feet tall. Not 20 feet high. Um... So, Chip, can you give Rex a boost? And I sort of just like describe what I've seen at the ceiling to Rex. Okay. Can I try like moving it? Prying it off? Yeah, we can try that. Alright then. Rex, as you get on top of Chip and then. Sort of pull out some means of prying the the slab loose. You watch yes. as the that entire not quite Tetris block, but you all know what I mean. Falls down from the ceiling, almost in like complete unison. Mm -hmm. No pistons, no ropes, no pulleys, or nothing, and just slams into the ground hard enough to crack the tiles below, and then lifts back up again. Okay, this is an interesting trap. I can say that. Wait, it lifts back up again? Yes. What pulls it back up? Seems to be magic of some sort. It's... it... Does it look like it goes directly back up into the ceiling, or is there like a space above it? It comes back up to where it was. There is no space for it to recess into. Damn. Oh, I'm gonna regret doing this. Um, Epper, holding Chip's hand as he does so... Oh, nope. Need to grab the right token. Steps around the tile. Whilst holding onto Chip's hand. <laughs> Ready to just yank back if he's gonna get smushed. Okay. You step on that side in that room, and nothing happens. Are you alive? His eyes are like bunch <laughs> scrunched closed. You, you, you sound alive. Yes, you sound alive. <clears throat> Alien voice that one. If you were not alive, you'd be squashed. Yes. Das would like to try and jump onto. Um, if, if Roll Twenty would cooperate with me, this time. Yeah, then there are walls that you can't go through anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Can't, can't have you jumping through the walls. There are things behind them that I want to keep secret. 
Well, anyways, Das would like to jump onto that tile. Okie dokie, you jump onto that tile, nothing happens. I am curious about this tile here. I, I'm i trying to see whether I have anything in my inventory that could be like, aha. So that tile is one of the ones up in the ceiling. Mm-hmm. And it has like a crystalline growth into it. I have a feeling if I stood on that tile, then I could be pierced. Um, one second. Uh, and Epp is just going to do a quick run and a jump over that so he doesn't get smushified. Just, just give me a hand just in case. I'm not being cute, I just don't want you to die. No, oh, alright then. Uh, Das is just gonna step onto that tile just for fun. Mm-hmm. Alright then. Uh, a 20 to hit you, Das. Uh, that does. I'm gonna use Uncanny Dodge. Take a whole four points of piercing damage, reduce to two. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, does Epper pull me out of the way on time? Uh, so, yeah, do I have a chance to? Uh, come ahead and make a dexterity check for me. I was gonna say, if I have to make a dexterity check... <laughs> That's a four! That's a four! No! <laughs> I wasn't quick enough. I know, very much like a... Huh. Oh my god, there's bikes in... Like, by the time you pull Das out of the way, Das has managed to, like, uncanny dodge the worst of it. What the... What the heck? What the heck, Hippopotamus? Like, what the, what the heck, Hippopotamus? Like, you were supposed to pull me out as soon as... as soon as something bad happened. You're heavier than you look! Are you saying I'm fat? That is not a very nice thing to say. I mean, you could afford to cut... Uh, p- cut, uh, cut down on the grog. At, uh, at that point, uh, Rex, <laughs> Rex just says, Oh, uh, I'm sorry if your uh, um, personal mass is uh, causing you self-confidence issues. Uh, das is just doing the cronk thing when uh, Yzma like, says she never liked his finish part. Yeah. <gasps> 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 <laughs> it, it, it's okay. No, it's okay. You're just beautiful the way you are. Oh, thank you. He's just patting himself on the shoulder. <laughs> this cancer <laughs> one strikes again. I mean, you're lighter now. I mean, look at all that blood you just lost. <gasps> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Don't be so insensitive. You know. Don't be so insensitive. Just because he never had these sort of body issues before, that doesn't mean that he can't. That, that doesn't mean that his feelings won't be hurt. Full on ignoring hmm. this sort of like upset reaction, Epo is going back to sort of see if there is a puzzle in this room because it seems like this is just trap. Let's He's curious see. to see if there is a puzzle. Go ahead and give me an intelligence check, Epo. Oh, that was not great. If you want. I, was I would that much rather in. use that because that turns it into a 15. And here, that kicks a wheel. So, looking around at the ceiling, there is certainly uh, a puzzle like uh, element. Because whilst the Tardas stood on, shot spikes at him, the crystals haven't vanished. They're still there. They're still the same size, still the same shape, still the same colours. That is, you notice, like, these ones are specifically white. This one has more of a green. These ones are more of a ruby red. Get a bit brighter so we can all see it. And then these ones are a nice sapphire blue. Uh... Das, what's your favourite colour? I don't know. No, I don't know. Would my favourite colour be too fat to uh, <laughs> answer that question? <laughs> I mean, 
Blue's a very slimming color. Do you want to try this? And Epa just sort of like gently, like just slips behind Das and just gently <laughs> guides him to the shiny blue crystals and just says, You could get one of those for like a necklace. You want to give it a go? You really think so? I think it would look so pretty sewed into your hat. And even better, there's red ones over there for like the brim. That is very true. I could look so fabulous like that. Did he step into the? <laughs> yeah, he will. <laughs> well, some more spikes shoot from the ceiling and miss you. I, I will take. I will take this. I will try and take the spikes in. I'll, I'll, put, I'll sew these onto my coat later. There they are like small fine bits of stone. They are just red sort of a granite -y Or blue colours. granite. No no, red granite stone like the rest of the the temple stone structure around you. Oh, I was the blue it crystals to match the crystals. Fill up in the ceiling. Well, totally oblivious to the fact that these crystals like almost impaled them in that. <laughs> The Das and me, me wants to walk over the black squares, just oblivious to the fact that they actually do something, or, or completely forgetting the fact that they actually do something. As you oh step God. over the black square, go I push. <laughs> I push. I shove them as a reaction, oh, just shove, to make sure. <laughs> yes. Like you shove Das into the box. No, over them, over them. <laughs> It's that and moment of, I'm too late, I'm too late! Advantage. Okay. <laughs> yeah, instead of making the pets do it, just make the rogue do it, why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, Chip is my das, son! Das is gonna take no damage because of evasion, I believe. Indeed. Thankfully that shove was enough. Otherwise you would have taken 20 points of bludgeoning damage as the ceiling falls and oh. smacks you. <laughs> it's just like comedy of errors where he's just like walking into every accident and just avoiding everything. It's like <laughs> some others do have them skit. Just avoiding all the accidents. It's like a Mr. Magoo kind of thing. Yes. <laughs> Only he's not blind. Um, <laughs> like, the, the, these, cri these stones on the blue one are red. Maybe if I step into the red one, there'll be the blue. <laughs> I mean, I can get you some. I can definitely get you some blue crystals. Oh, the natural one. Oh, oh sugar. More stone spikes oh, flying down from the ceiling. He's Mr. Magooing it. <laughs> <laughs> down. There's this beautiful moment where Epper is about to shoot the blue tile because he does feel a little bad about upsetting Das and was going to go get some crystals and just sees what 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 do I see when Das gets a natural one? No, what you watch is Das like sitting there looking forlorn on the red sky, looking up and like, oh, the red ones are just as pretty. Holds his hands out as you watch <laughs> darts descend from the ceiling and just make a Das outline around him. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> <laughs> I do shoot the blue tile. Okay. Then. For the record. <laughs> As you shoot the ceiling, some blue crystals fall from above and slam into the tile below. As it slams into the tile below, you're not quite sure if it's like the flash from the muzzle or um, like your eyes adjusting afterwards. But it almost looks like the blue crystals above start to glow very faintly. Well, maybe these green ones will like, make me compliment my outs. I don't know what kind of my outs I think that is a reaction. Hit, which is a miss, I believe. Mm. More spikes just fall from the ceiling and completely miss you. <laughs> He's just collecting these crystals as they go along. I don't know. Uh, Again, these aren't crystals falling from the ceiling. They are redstone oh, red spikes. Oh, right. But there are some blue crystals that fell down from the blue tile after being shot? Yes. 
Yeah, may time to grab a few of those, and I'll just shoot the other two tiles. As you take the blue crystals off the floor, the blue crystals in the ceiling fade. Almost like a light going to dim. That seems weird. Oh, oh, look, the energy is running out on the <laughs> trap itself. Are the crystals that I've picked up still blue, or is it just the yeah, tile on the blue, ceiling? Again, they've dimmed. They're out of battery. Hold them over the tile again? So hold them over the tile again. They glow faintly. They seem to glow brighter when you actually put them on the floor. I drop one on the floor? So you drop one on the floor, it glows a brilliant blue, and you hear the sound of a the grinding of a gear somewhere uh, just behind you and above you in this corridor over here. I've never been so happy to have explosives. I just I just turn round, I shoot the white one, I just tell Das, put a crystal on each of the coloured tiles, put like the, crystal, crystal, the debris on the tiles. Green on green, red on red. First I'll deal with the white one. First you're encouraging me to get crystals on myself and I It'll open a cool secret door, Das. Do you like treasure? I do. Lo I do love treasure. No, I'm not gonna lie about that. <laughs> he'll, he'll just like put the. He'll just do his episodes and just like pop the <laughs> crystals on right, the spot. As, as you guys start sweeping up and solving this swift little puzzle, you hear the sounds of all things grinding away. And Epa, because you are the closest, you notice that this door over here had has like a ring lock on it and each segment is a different color white blue green red that all seem to shrink and recede away and now you can see behind each of these ringed segments are now four indents where something could be inserted and used to put you know, yeah put something in um I'm going to pick up one, like... I'm going to leave white crystals on there, but I will pick up one white crystal with mage hand, one blue crystal with mage hand, and just yell across for Das to do the same. And then I tell him to run and jump over the black tiles. <laughs> okay, Das will run and jump over the black tiles. Yeah. I'm going to guess. Blue and blue, green and green, red and red, white on white. I mean... I, I don't think it'll be anything else, to be honest. After you? Or do you want to do it at the same time? Ah, why not? Let's come uh, with me. As, as you put the respective shards in the respective holes, the shards don't fit their holes. <gasps> oh. You realise that what these are look like crests or emblems. Oh. Ow. In your disappointment it... looking around, you notice that on the walls either side are inscriptions. They're very faint, but you can make them out. What language are they in? They are in Primordial. Oh, oh for pity's sake. I knew I need to, I need I need to read that book. Oh, I speak primordial. No, it's deep speech. I think I'm thinking of um uh, Zopper, I think she could. Yeah. I think somebody knows... If, um, if you know, like, Aqua, speak language. Heron, like, the elemental languages, you could translate some of it. So I think you could translate some, but not all of it. Yeah. Um, I guess I've got deep speech and Aquan. Yeah. Oh, Dow! What? There's some writing on the walls, which are not a lot of us can understand I don't suppose you with your expertise in the language of the earthy people can uh, translate this to us please pretty please <sighs> give me a second someone hold on to the egg in fact you the one they call chip hold this <laughs> and chip is always like just basically like a coffee table <laughs> It's like this egg is bigger than Chip. Yeah. <laughs> Just... 
Um, Dal goes over to the the inscription and she translates the two halves. Um, the one on the left side is as above, so below. Oh, that must be what we did with the um, coloured crystals. Okay. Uh -huh. And then the other half reads that uh, four pantheons, four races, four sigils. And what? Four, cha four chambers to unlock the heart. Um, well, me as a player can kind of guess what that would have to be. Mm. As at that point, now points out, like, oh, for goodness sake, of course it would be something stupid. Okay, so around this place, like it's also like a burial ground of heroes that our people respected. You'd have to go to respective things, and there'd be a sigil. One of the sigils that's in the Im imprints does it match the? I think you said snake symbol. Uh, the gorgon, oh. the Medusa head. No. Yeah. Ooh. Those of you who are trained, go ahead and give me a religion check. Regarding these four sigils. I should move down back to looking up the crystals. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> um, on fire with these kind of things. Yes, just a <laughs> moment. I need to find my character sheet. There we go. Considering my other two characters I regularly play have intelligence of zero, it's so much fun playing Epper doing skill checks. <laughs> just insane. Yeah. Alright then. Um, Epper, since you got the natural 20, you know uh -huh. that these, the four pantheons in question are clearly meant to be the Olympic pantheon for humans, the Shinto pantheon for elves, the Nordic Pantheon for Dwarves, and the Draconic Pantheon for the Dragonborn. You know roughly what all those sigils look like. The Olympic one is a lightning bolt piercing uh, through the clouds. The Norse one is the Odin knot. You know, the three triangles are all intertwined to one another. Mm. Um, so on and so forth. Meh. Yeah. With the right kind of equipment, you could probably even fudge the puzzle. Do I have a fourth level spell slot? <laughs> <laughs> this is an excellent question. Do you have? I a do. Level I have. <laughs> However, I did not. Fa I did not prepare fabricate today. <laughs> so I put Damn. it out there. <laughs> Here's an option. Oh, for the sake. So it's so annoying these like subscription spells in your spell book. Like you gotta like you gotta pay the fee, and then if you're not prepared, if you don't choose it in the morning, you don't have to access it for the whole day. I mean, I'm glad that like for free they let you change it every twenty four hours, but it's very annoying. a way that we could easily create these stone things that you could put into the slots without us having to go through all this temple and getting uh, all the medallions. I don't know. I mean, it seems fun. Um, Just out of curiosity, this is a passage, isn't it? Yes. Um, and there was also a door here and a door here that you both missed. Oh, see, that's why I was leaning on that wall because it flickers in and out, and I thought it was a secret. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I suppose. <clears throat> I suppose we should probably choose a door to go through and try and grab these medallions. I guess there's a human statue in the in that room. 
assuming Sigil might be adjacent to it. Alright, then Das will skillfully jump over the hole and will go to the door and just open it up if it is unlocked. It is unlocked. I will open the door. Huh. There seems to be a long corridor. There is, it does indeed. It opens into a nice yeah. wide 15 foot corridor. Yeah. Same over here! Right, what do my cobalt eyes see? Das and Epper. As you two reach that point. I see a, we, I see a cobalt! <laughs> I just Damn. imagine I'm just imagining um uh like Pepper and Das like seeing each other and goes, You like the whole Spider Man meme. Yeah. <laughs> Very much what I was going for. <laughs> Very much. Uh I also just realised I rolled the wrong thing. <gasps> I need to look at a specific spell. No, I forgot to note down what the spell was, because I am a genius, honest. Is it a wish spell? No. Aww. Yeah, they might, uh, you don't want an enemy to be casting wish. No, no, I was thinking the enemy would give a wish to me. <laughs> the wish of melting. I've forgotten the name of the spell and it's annoying me now. Ooh, actually, that would be a really grim spell. Just just something that would change the bonds on the atoms in your body. Oh, so, like, no. you, you, there's no temperature change or anything, but rather than, like, the, like, structured solids, you've sort of got, like, the, the same molecular structure as liquids. So you just... The same matter and materials, the same temperature, just sloughing down into a puddle. Uh, Horrible I mean, way to go. Point, my brain just goes, you just basically become what happens when Dr. Manhattan doesn't want you in the universe anymore. <laughs> you just cease to exist. You He's still a... there. You're just very dead. <laughs> that was what I meant to roll. First of all, I need to roll one of those. Okay. Can't... I'm not looking forward to this, because it can't end well. Uh, That's a lot of red. That is indeed. Uh, that would be better as that colour. Which goes there, and then lastly... A four. Huh. That is hilarious. Alright then. So at that point, I would like... So first of all, Captain Das Hello. and Epper, the two of these together. AC 12. Uh, that misses. That will hit. Um, well, unless I cast shield. Um... Do I have the ability to react? You do indeed. In which case, I will panic and I will cast shield. I will cartwheel out of the way. Alright then. What you witness happen is you two step into the room. The statue at the end of this room, which I should reveal. Because I'm being me. There we go. Uh, at the end of the room is a statue. Um, pointing its finger outwards. When you guys stepped into the corridor together, you watched as the tip of the finger began to cast the spell, at which point three beams shot across the floor. One scorched the ground, one seemed to have no visible effect, the other one seemed to have pushed things out the way. Epi, you reactively cast shield, and you know that it is a spell of some sort that just bounces off your shield and scatters it everywhere. Has it stopped? Seems to, yes. God, we yeah. got a spooky... Yeah, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. We have a spooky statue mix 
statue person who's casting spells. Oh dear. I, I would have noticed that these bits here right at the end are the only ones which I haven't. Uh, yes. So where I am. Okay. Chip, I need you to do something for me. I need you to throw me. Oh. <laughs> I need you to throw me as hard as you can towards the statue. Okay? <laughs> Nods and sound of grinding earth. I'm going to regret this so badly. <laughs> but yeah, as you can imagine, I, 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 Chip throws me. All right then. Chip go, throws you across. I don't know how my brain's gone, how that's going to work, but I need to recall some things anyway. Uh, I guess it'll be a strength check. Uh, yeah, can we give, head and give me a strength check. I'm just going to do, make my life a lot fast for this. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> the seven. Oh yeah, it does not get far. So that one. So the bottom one seems to have like suffers as a sonic boom of some description. The middle row catches fire, and then Epper, where I... you are. Uh, I need to make my D twenty roll again. I say, like, where did I land? I will say you land about here. Okay, wait. I need to select one token. There you go. Uh, oh god. Uh, ah! <laughs> um. Natural one. The beams fly over the top of you. But continue on down the corridor. You know how like... um, Rats and cats can sort of just like... Melt flat into the ground? Yes. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's basically what Epper's done. Just got, got as flat as he possibly can. <laughs> <sighs> and just like, while sort of belly, belly rubbing it, rubbing his belly against the floor, just sort of like wriggles round around the corner. <laughs> Alright then. That wasn't fun! I should point out, every six seconds, you know, this beam thing goes off each time the beams are random. Ah. What, as in it's just consistently doing that? It's not triggered by us, like, trying to nope. move? It's not triggered by you guys coming in, it's actually triggered by a round of actions, essentially. But each time one of those beams are randomised. There is no pattern, there is no consistency. I want one of these. This would be amazing on the prow of the big claw. <laughs> Go ahead and make an arcana check if you want, Epper. <laughs> of course! Chaotic arcana checks, let's go. <laughs> 24? So you know this is a an evolution of an evocation spell. That wizards find disgusting, but sorcerers, it comes quite naturally to them. Oh, it's Chaos Bolt? Yes. Oh. Okay, so I could dispel the statue, or I could look at the thing behind me. What's the thing behind me? The thing behind you is it looks like a tombstone of some description. On it are two inscriptions. Let me uh, guess, they're in Primordial. No, actually, these appear to be in Dwarven. Yes! <laughs> 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 I can read! <laughs> <laughs> you sit there and read these inscriptions. Um, I don't actually think of a name for these guys, but these are like two Dwarven brothers. Hugan and Mugen. Philly and Killy. So many Tolkien references, and no, it won't be the Ravens. Oh. But, uh, uh, but what are the other brothers? 
Are there more than one set of brothers in? Uh, it's Feely, Keely, Dwalin, Balin, Biffa, Buffa, Bomba. Dory, Dory, Dory. and Grub. Yep. <laughs> there is a lot. There is a whole blasted poem in the Edda about dwarves. And it's just a long rattling of names. But anyway, in any case, these two dwarven brothers um, are considered the first earth seers for their people, and so they've been immortalized here. And you notice on top of the tombstone in the middle is the sigil for the Nordic Pantheon, the infinite Odin knot. Which just quite happily pops out with no issue. I found one! Hooray! The statue's still going, isn't it? Yep. Every think... six seconds. Epa, Epa sort of just like has a little nosy around, tries to see if like this sarcophagus opens. Quick bit, poke around. It seems like it could open. <laughs> Are you actually going to open it? Well, for all I know, there's a switch in here. Fair enough. Then. You push it open, and what you find inside are. Well, part of you was expecting dwarven skeletons, but what you find are actually, like, petrified dwarven bodies. For lack of a better term. Almost looks like they were, they were carved in stone and then left here. Fascinating. But poking around, you do not find a switch. When I did that arcana check, how powerful a spell is the spell effect on the statue? Seems to be first level. Just doing all three at once. Um. Oh, okay, cool. Then I should be able to handle that. Um. I'll have a quick check at the statue just to see if there is a switch on the statue first. Investigating around the statue, you find that whilst it is amazingly well carved, there are no switches for the magical trap. I'm very sorry, mag magical statue, but um, you're just going to be dramatic now. Um, and I am going to cast a third level dispel magic. But if you'll let me, as hmm. some sort of test, I want to try and capture the magic rather than sc just ca just scatter it. Go ahead and give me another Arcana check. Now I'll consider this as like you're doing a longer version of Dispel, but like you're using the wizard feature or like you can note down a spell. Nice. That's another twenty-four. Nice. In which case then you happily dispel magic and you you find a way of making your own variants of Chaos Bolt. Now that'll be fun in the crossbow. Yeah. I'm gonna have to... If it just like scribbles the notes down and whilst he sort of waddles down the corridor. <laughs> it takes you a while though. Um, for everybody else, if they wanted, they can take a short rest whilst you sit there and painstakingly work out like the arcane formula. Yeah, I would love to take mm -hmm. a short rest so I can... The, uh... the necessary pull on the weave to make things work. Hmm. Actually, yeah, Epi will just sit at the base of the statue whilst he's making notes. <laughs> uh -huh. Come closer to inspect as well. Mm. Oh, Tink, you might find these useful. And I'll just share the notes with Tink. Mm-hmm. I'll sort of start writing them down as well on like a little notepad. Very fun. Oh wait, no! That means the hour's gonna be up! Chip! My son! My yeah. child! Chip just waves goodbye after the hour. Oh. Be good. <laughs> Disappears on the I way. will try and summon you back, my son! <laughs> Ten 
have no idea if that's possible with sell some some an elemental, but <laughs> damn it, you've got me emotionally attached to a a, a functioning yes. sentient lump of stone. <laughs> Everyone's meant to be attached to the cute kobolds. The cute kobolds are not meant to adopt everyone as pets. <laughs> The <laughs> funny thing is, is that technically speaking, every campaign that Brian ran, we've adopted at least one kobold, and technically speaking, you're the kobold that we adopted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, does that make Chip? Does that make Chip the rest of the party's grandson? I mean, possibly. But anyway. Um, for the sake of my notes, and so in case I forget, uh, Tink and Epa, the two of you, uh, because you have spell casting in that regard, make a note that Chaos Bolt can now be a optional spell for you. Oh, very cool. Only at first level. You can't cast it any higher than that. But it is first level spell. Very fun. So we can prepare that. Yes. Cool. All right. Then. Um. Captain Das, you find more corridor worth exploring. Uh, I'm going to look for traps. Let's have a look. That is a twenty-one. As you look down this corridor, Captain Das, you notice that parts of the wall don't. The masonry is a bit deeper than what it should be. Mm. You got the sneaky suspicion that some bits may be painful should you walk through them. Um, Most painful would be this bit, yeah. this bit. Mm. Rex is actually joining Dash, Dash here with with them. So if I were to throw a stone of some description. Mm -hmm. into like, <laughs> at least that general area what would happen so you throw a, a quite hefty stone enough to trigger what looks like a pressure pad of some sort at which mm -hmm. point you watch as both sides of the corridor just slam into the middle and oh. then pull away and the stone you had it's not there anymore ha <sighs> looks like these will turn you into some form of puree if uh, you don't get out of the way on time. To which Das is going to. Uh, like, try and do a hop, skip, and jump over. Mm hmm. Hop, hop, skip, and jump. Yep. <laughs> jump on through. Rex does the same. Like, <laughs> up. Uh, up. Keep bunny hopping up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Between the two of you, do you make your way to this far end of the corridor? There is a branching set of pathways. One goes out and seems to go back down. There's one that mm -hmm. goes south directly from where you are currently standing, and another one that goes up and north. Hmm. You're currently standing. The, Should we? The pathways go north and south, but you can see ending doorways. Okay. Um, should we do the north one first and the south one after that? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Benjamin, my boy, would you love to kick down the door? <laughs> well. Legitimately, I want to know how this has gone from Rex to Benjamin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Rex uh, actually um, kind of um, uh, jumps in the air and <laughs> kicks the door open <laughs> with both of his hind legs. The door swings open violently. Always to the point, like, it always bounces back <laughs> from how hard you've kicked it. <laughs> but as you 
Look We're only meant to blow the bloody doors off! <laughs> Sorry! Um, <laughs> you see an empty space off to the left which seems to have been used for storage at some point. You can see the clear signs of mm -hmm. stone being scraped on the ground. Can but, I... Uh, can I throw... Uh, a perception check? If I can hear, is there anything... Anything here? There is what certainly something going on, cause? and something that does not require your perception, as this is quite audible. Uh, you okay. can hear the sounds of these cultists speaking in an earthen language, um, talking about a particular individual they seem to be uh, almost giving praise to over his gravestone. <laughs> At that point, uh, Rex just uh, whispers to Das, like... I would so love to have a message right now. <laughs> I mean, since I'm a nippy little guy, I could just quickly bounce back across the uh, um, like trap floors and just be and just uh, tell everyone else what I'm going to be going on. Yeah, sure. Das will quickly and nippily go back over the trapped pressure pad things. Mm -hmm. Das will just shout through. Well, shout like, Oi! Flopsy and I managed to find a room where there's people chanting, probably those earthy cultists that uh, are doing some unscrupulous things. So, um, yeah, if you want to come help us get rid of Ender's Hell, well, that'll be great. Right, so already point. started dealing with them. Uh, at that point, go, well, okay, fine. I suppose we could go and <laughs> fix everything. Rex uh, just uh, runs <laughs> behind the wall. All right, then. If you're in safe, I'll try to be sneaky as well. I'm going to try and be sneaky. Um, I'll just roll stuff. Wee! Oh, oh, mind the floor, it's trapped. Ah! <laughs> like, that extra long strap, that okay. sort of moment of stepping over of extra long gap. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, let's move you all over here. Yeah, 19. Pretty stealthy. You seem to be without noise, Tess. Can I, can I throw stealth to try to be bit uh, more quiet. <laughs> I'm afraid at this point they already know you're uh, here. They don't know Das is here, but they know the rest of you are here. Okay. At which point we will pick this up next week. Yes. As a small yep. church congregation is now aware of your presence within the Temple of Earth. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. Dun dun dun. So I hope you've all enjoyed that session tonight. If you have done yes. so, please be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe, and all that Twitch and YouTube jazz. And we'll pick this up next week as these guys continue their exploration of the Earth Temple. And who knows, maybe cheese the last puzzle. Hmm. But until then, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.